Well, good morning again, everyone. This is Alexander Rabinow, and I am the Access to Justice Fellow at the Center for Access to Justice and Technology at IIT Chicago Kent College of Law. I want to thank you all for joining us this morning, November 6, 2014, for our A2J Author New User Workshop, where today we'll be talking about simple and conditional branching. Before we get started, a few housekeeping items. All attendees are on mute. To ask a question, you can raise your hand or put questions in the question box. If you want to be heard by phone, you have to enter your audio PIN. And please do know that this will be recorded and posted to our A2J Author YouTube channel at www.youtube.com slash A2J Author. Today's topic is simple and conditional branching in A2J Author 5.0. Our agenda for today is we're going to be talking about what branching means. We'll talk about simple branching, which is branching using buttons. And then we'll talk about conditional branching, which is all done in the advanced logic tab of the questions editor. So let's talk about branching. Let's start with the definition. Branching is the ability to direct an end user to a particular line of questions or avoid particular questions according to an answer the end user has given. So why don't we talk about an example. Uh, you might see a guide interview where it asks the end user if they're married. If the end user selects yes, then they continue to ask them questions about the spouse or other follow-up questions. If the end user selects no, then it skips the follow-up questions and goes on to the next set of questions. Branching is one of the key features of A2J Author. It avoids making the end user answer irrelevant questions. We want this guided interview to be as useful as possible without bogging the end user down with unnecessary questions. You can create one interview to meet many situations. A2J author guided interviews don't typically progress linearly. We have to account for different conditions, and this is what branching can do. It also makes information gathering clear and efficient, and it presents each end user with a tailored interview. Simple branching. As I mentioned before, simple branching is branching using buttons to direct the end user. So in this screenshot, we have uh, the guide avatar asking the end user if they're married with two buttons available to select, yes or no. And the guide interview will progress based on the end user's answers. So here's a view of the buttons tab. This is a general overview, but what we're concerned with today is adding and deleting buttons, changing the button label, and choosing the destination question on the button click. As you see, there are other things that you can do with A2J Author. Um, there are a lot of robust features. Um, a couple of them here that you'll see are the repeat loop options, assigning a, a variable of value, um, so many different things that you can do on the Buttons tab, but what we're going to be focused on today is the navigation aspect of the Buttons tab. Each question can, can contain up to three buttons. So on the left, you see the editor view. It's a drop-down menu, which you can uh, click and select up to three buttons. On the preview, on the right side, you'll see that the end user has three options before them, three buttons that they can select from yes, no, or not sure. Each button can direct the end user to a different question. So in this screenshot, you'll see, uh, you can't see the label on this one here on the top, but this is the, the editor for the yes button, and then this one is the editor for the, the no button. And each of those goes to a different page, depending on the click. Here's a shot of the, um, the destination uh, page editor on the buttons tab. 
And you can see as you, you can select them really easily there. You see all the different pages that they can go to. They can go to a previous question, a new question. They can go to the exit features. This is just a, a simple screenshot of what you can do with the, with the button destination feature. So for those of you who are familiar with using uh, A2J Author, you know that there is a map feature, which is a very useful tool that can uh, show graphically to the, the guide interview developer how their questions connect. So here I've put together a simple screenshot of that uh, question that I asked previously about uh, their marital status. So you'll see there that uh, there are two options, one of which is yes and one of which is no. And each of those selections goes to a new page. They select yes, they go to a question regarding their spouse's name, and if they select no, they go to a question asking about children. The other type of branching that's available to use in A2J Author is conditional branching. As I mentioned before, the guided interview needs to account for several different answers that the end user will select. The end user doesn't typically go through this in a linear progression, so we have to account for those conditions. And one of which here I've displayed is uh, an advanced condition where if the end user selects their date of birth such that she is under 18 years, of, 18 years old, then she is then directed to a page that informs her that she does not qualify to continue the interview. If she's over 18, she's directed to follow up questions. And this is all done in the advanced logic tab. So there in the syntax, you see if age, and it, it uh, uses the age function to calculate the date of birth. If that's less than 18, then they go to the do not qualify page. Otherwise, they go to a follow up page. Here's a shot of that advanced logic tab, and uh, this is a screenshot of the means test, which, is, which may be useful to a lot of the legal aid organizations when they're trying to figure out whether an end user is, uh, is eligible to use this guided interview. So in this screenshot, you'll see uh, some advanced conditions. What's useful about the advanced logic tab is that you can add conditions that evaluate the data entered by the end user. So here uh, we have the condition um, there are three conditions here. If their income level, that variable is income NU, is less than or equal to 35,000. The next set of conditions um, are if the uh, end user's income is greater than 35,000 and less than 50,000. And then the, the last condition you see there is if the end user's income is greater than 50,000. So we've got three different conditions that we need to account for. Each condition will determine which destination question to send the end user to. So why don't I jump into a sample guided interview to show you how some of this works. Here's one I have put together for this session. And this question should look familiar to you all. Uh, that's a question asking if the end user is married. So if the end user selects yes, it'll ask for information about their spouse. Here, their spouse's name. If we go back, no, it'll ask the end user questions about their children. This is an example of simple branching because we're branching using the buttons. On the back end of this, you can see the question asks, what is your spouse's name? And we input that here in the text editor. In the fields, I'm sorry, this is the, here. It asks if you're married. If the end user selects yes, they go to the page for spouse's name. If they select no, they go to the page about their children. And you can see that the destination page is highlighted so that it's easy for you to see exactly where the end user is going to be going.
So for this question, we'll go ahead and select no. And we're taken to an example here of conditional branching. Now, earlier I talked about using conditional branching uh, commonly for a means test for, for legal aid organizations to determine whether an end user can use this guided interview. So we will see some of those screenshots in play here as I go through this section of the guided interview. So we'll ask the end user what their annual household income is. If you remember from the conditions that we set, we were setting conditions based on income levels. So we were accounting for, and let me see if I can pull this up here for you. Again, this is all done in the advanced logic tab. So here are those conditions again. Okay? We're going to ask the end, we're going to ask the end user if their income is less, if it's less than or equal to 35,000, we're going to tell the end user that they'll qualify and we'll go to that qualifying page. If their income level is greater than 35,000 but less than 50,000, we're going to need some more information. So we'll go to a page asking for some follow-up questions related to their basic living expenses. If their income level, though, is over 50000 then we're going to go to a page where it, that tells them they don't qualify. So let's see if all this works. Okay, so let's test this out with an annual household income of, let's say, 25000 Continue, and there we go. The guide avatar tells the end user that they do qualify to use this guided interview. Let's go back. Let's change this up. What if we say that the income level is 40,000? Test it out, and there we go. A follow-up question asking the end user about their uh, basic living expenses per month. One more condition that we have to account for, and that's if the end user selects over 50,000, and I'll tell them that they don't qualify for the guided interview. Now let's say over 50,000, say 60,000. Unfortunately, you do not qualify to use this guided interview. So in this preview, we've seen the advanced logic in play. Once again, those are the conditions. We've set three different conditions based on the potential answer that the end user will select. Are there any questions at this point? We've talked about simple, uh, simple branching. We've talked about conditional branching. Again, these are all very useful things that you can do in A2J Author to really make this a very personal and informative guide interview for your end user. Hey, Alex. I wanted to add um, just, just an addendum to that for folks. So, so what, what are the things that, that, he, that he doesn't show on the screen, but, it, but it's worth knowing? As I, as I see who's on this call, I see some uh, very experienced uh, users. Um, there is an else statement in those, in those if statements, which is to say you can do an if something else something else. Um, and so you don't have to, in the old A to J4, it was, it, we didn't have else. And you basically had to you know, create multiple stacks of if statements. Um, now you can do if then else. And that uh, shortens or simplifies uh, the, the, the code and the amount of work that you have to do. I just wanted to mention that. All right. Thanks for that, John. Yes, it's a very useful thing to remember is that else statement, which I don't have here, but um, we thank John for that reminder. So let's talk about some additional resources. Um, as you know, since you're on this, uh, we do have the A2J New User Workshops every first Thursday of the month. And we want to thank you guys for joining us this morning. You can also check out our library of training videos on our YouTube channel at www.youtube.com slash A2J author. There we've got a, a, a vast uh, array of resources that you can use. We even have some of our old uh, A2J author 4.0 videos, which uh, if you're interested in viewing, they're available for you there. 
Um, we've got our newest uh, 5.0 videos there as well, and we are continuously adding to that library uh, as we move forward. So it's really a rich resource for you to use, and we really encourage you uh, to check that out. If you have any questions or feedback, there's my contact information. Uh, again, I will be running the next few sessions with you. Uh, and if you want to reach, uh, reach out to me, uh, my email address is there. Any final questions? Of course, we want to thank Cali, Computer Assisted Legal Instru uh, Center for Computer Assisted Legal Instruction for the GoToMeeting services. It's a very useful uh, tool that we can use, and we really want to thank Callie for that. And we thank you guys for your time uh, joining us this morning. And this concludes our webinar. Have a great day, everyone.